Hey, so one of my clients, Christina, wrote in and said, Hey Salma, I'm digging into my analytics thanks to the new module that you've uploaded. And I've noticed that for the past year, I'm quite low on suggested views. Is there any specific tactic you could recommend in order to raise the percentage of suggested views? Hell yes. <laughs> so in this video, I'm going to walk you through how the YouTube suggested algorithm works and how to be a suggested video on YouTube. So are you ready? Hey, Go-Getter, I'm Salma Jafri. I'm the founder of YouTube Launchpad, the course to grow your personal brand with video. If you are interested in growing your visibility, credibility, and profitability on YouTube, then hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon, and let's begin. Let's start off this video by talking about what is a suggested video. What does that even mean? So on the right-hand side of your videos, you'll see a column called Up Next, and under that column will be lots of videos that YouTube is suggesting your viewers to watch after they're done watching your video or even while they're watching your video. So all the videos that appear in that right-hand sidebar are suggested videos. And traditionally, suggested videos drive a lot more views and traffic to your YouTube channel because YouTube is understanding what the viewer wants to see and it's suggesting what they would like to watch next. So typically, you want your videos to be suggested next to popular videos to actually get more and more views. Well, that begs the question, where does YouTube get the data to figure out what videos it should be suggesting next to your videos? Well, there are two things that YouTube looks at when it decides on what videos to suggest next to yours. So the first one is personalized recommendations based on your viewer history. So your watch history. So in for you for your audience, it's your audience's watch history. What have people watched before that is taken into consideration? It shows YouTube what your interests are and what things you want watch over and over again and what things keep your interest for the longest period of time. So your watch history determines your personal recommendations. The second thing that YouTube takes a look at is topic relevance. Okay, so how related is the topic that they're going to suggest to the topic that you're already watching. So if you're watching a video about dieting, let's say it's going to suggest you other videos about dieting, right? So those are the two things that the YouTube algorithm takes into consideration when it puts your list of suggested videos to watch, your personal recommendations based on what you've already shown interest in and are likely to watch longer and relevancy to the topic that you're watching right now. So that makes our work a lot easier as YouTube creators. Now, what we need to do, let's say your mission, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> is basically to find out these two things. You want to find out what your viewers watch history is so that you can understand what videos are they watching before your video. And the second thing that you want to understand is how can you create topics that are related? So how can you create uh, a topic that is related to something that you want to show up next to as suggested? So let's dive into the tactics that you can use to get more suggested videos and get YouTube to suggest more of your videos next to popular videos so that you can get more views and more clicks, right? So let's dive into that. Okay, so the first thing that we want to see is our suggested views percentage, which means we wanna see how many views are we currently getting from suggested. And we're gonna dive into the computer to do that. So you wanna go into your YouTube studio, okay? And inside YouTube studio, you wanna click on analytics from the left tab, and then on the top, tab, you want to click on reach, and then you want to scroll down to where it says traffic source types. Now you can see that it says I'm getting 47% of my views from YouTube search, 23.7% from external and 10.7% from suggested. Now remember, this is views data only for the last 28 days. So if you want to do like a channel wide analysis or a lifetime analysis, you want to go here on the top right corner and actually change this to 90 days, 365 days. Let's just try lifetime and see what kind of results we get. Okay, so in lifetime, you can see that in the entire lifespan of my channel, 38.5% of my YouTube views are coming in from YouTube search and 20.3% of my views are coming in 
from suggested. So that tells you the percentage, whether you want to increase that percentage or you're already getting a lot of views from suggested or where your traffic is coming from. It gives you a little bit of understanding about where you might be a little bit weak and what areas can you uplift your percentage in. Okay, the second thing that you want to do is to find related channels and videos. Remember I told you that YouTube is looking for relevance of related topics, right? And related channels. So there are two ways to find this. The first one I'm going to show you, you want to head over to your audience tab right up here. And then you want to scroll down to the section that says other videos your audience watched. Now you can see that this is blank for me right now. And also you can see that it says the last seven days. So I used to have data in here, but right now YouTube does not have enough data. Now, if this happens to you, I'll tell you what to do. But if you can see over here what videos your audience watched, then make a note of those channels that are showing up here. I'll put a screenshot of what this section looks like. Okay, so what you want to do is make a note of what kind of channels and what kind of videos your audience is also watching. That is going to clue you in as to your audience's watch history and what kind of videos they've already been watching. And it's going to give you some data about how YouTube is going to be showing personalized results to your audience based on that. Okay, now if this area is blank for you, here's the second thing that you could do to get an idea about what are people watching before they come to your channel. So you want to go back into reach and then you want to scroll down to where it says traffic source suggested videos. Okay, and this is still lifetime. So I'm going to keep this lifetime and then I'm going to click on see more. And when I click on see more, this new pop up window opens up and it's going to show me what videos are suggesting my videos. In other words, what are people watching before they're watching my videos? And remember, I want this information so I can start to predict what kind of videos to create to get more of those kind of suggested views. So I'm going to scroll down here and some of my own videos you'll see are suggesting my own videos, which is going to happen when you create a channel and do a lot of um, linking between your videos. So one of the top videos recommending my videos is this one, how to make videos with your phone. Another video that's recommending mine is how to start a YouTube channel step by step for beginners. Then this one is my own video. Then this one is my own video. Uh, let's scroll down here. Yeah, this one is how to live stream from Zoom to YouTube. And then this one is how to write a video script for YouTube. So I could go down this list and make a note of both the videos that are suggesting my content and also the channels that people are watching before they come and watch my content. So this clues me in as to what kind of viewer history people have before they land on my channel. I want to take a second here and mention that we talk a lot about YouTube being a search engine, but YouTube is also a prediction engine. It is trying to predict what people want to see next, because remember, the goal of YouTube is to keep people watching because that's how they can serve up ads to people and monetize their platform and actually earn money, right? So they want to make sure that people keep watching. In order to keep people watching, they want to predict what somebody will want to watch next. So you your job as a creator then is to try and predict what your audience will be most interested in that will keep them watching. What should they be watching next, right? And you want to use all of this data that you're getting from your YouTube analytics as to how much percentage of views you're getting from suggested, what channels are recommending your content, what videos are suggesting your videos. And so this is going to give you all of that background data. So our objective now is to make an algorithmic connection between the content and the videos that we want to be suggested next to. So we want to, we want the YouTube algorithm to kind of recognize it. We want to engineer that almost, right? Um, and we want to give the YouTube algorithm signals that, oh, if they're watching this content, you should suggest our video next. So we want to create and engineer that. So the first thing we want to do to engineer that is 
It's really, really simple. And so few people do this step, which is to comment on other channels that you want to be suggested next to. Super simple strategy. And I have a whole video on how to actually leave valuable comments that's going to drive people back to your channel. I'll link to it right up here in the info card. Be sure to go and check it out after this video is over. But basically what you want to do is you want to head on over to those channels that you've identified that are similar to yours, that are creating the type of content that you're creating, that are relevant and related in some way. Either the topics are relevant or the creator is very similar to you and the topics are something that your audience cares about already. And then you want to go and comment on their latest videos, right? So find a channel that is active, that is producing videos regularly and frequently and Every time they release a new video, you want to go there and leave a valuable comment, not a spammy comment, not a link comment, not a sub for sub comment, not asking people to come and check out your channel because all of those are frankly speaking, unethical tactics. And frankly speaking, they're just spam, right? You don't want to do that. You actually want to go and leave valuable comments. And again, watch my video on how to actually leave valuable comments. And when you do that, that's going to naturally drive people to come and check out your YouTube channel. So guess what you're doing now? You're creating that algorithmic connection. The YouTube algorithm is seeing, oh, people who are watching this video are going next and clicking on this channel, your channel, right? So that algorithmic connection is being created by something as simple as leaving valuable comments on related channels. The second thing that you can do to create that connection for the YouTube algorithm is to create topically relevant videos. Now, remember we said in the beginning that the suggested algorithm sees the viewer's past history. So we've seen the past history. We've made the connection. We found the channels. We found the videos that are suggesting our contents. We've done that first part. And now we are going to do the second part, which is to create relevant topics. So the easiest way to do that is to go back through your list of the channels that are recommending your content and the types of videos that are recommending your content and create a video that is topically relevant. But this is the big but, okay? But they also, your video should offer more. Your video should offer the next step. Your video should fill the gaps that that video doesn't. Because if you're just going to create a copycat video, it's frankly, it's first of all, it's just going to be a copycat video. Okay. And it just doesn't look nice to copy people on the internet. I mean, it's very easy to find copycats and people just wouldn't trust you if you're just going to be copying, right? So you don't want to copy. You actually want to go in and be really smart about this and create a video that people will want to watch after that video. So the way that I did it is that I saw one of Sunny's videos, which was how to make a video using your phone. And then I said, okay, if I want to create, if I want to tell the YouTube algorithm that people should come and watch this video next, suggest this video next, how can I make a better version of that video? And I decided that one of the things that was missing from that video was the next step. How to make a video and what do you do after you make a video you want to edit that video so I made a video called how to film and edit your videos using your phone which was the natural next step similar titles similar tags but different content right Another way to differentiate it, you could make your video more value packed. You could add in more uh, explanation, more case studies, more um, stories, more funny moments. Um, you could do it by making a longer video, go more in depth, show more detail. There are tons and tons of ways to take a video and add more value to it using your personal approach and your perspective to it, right? So that's how you want to think about adding value, making it better, but using that topic and getting YouTube to suggest your content next to another topic that is very, very similar. I did that again with Nick's video. He, his video was how to write a video script. So I made a video on how to read a video script. Again, you can see the next Okay, what would people need to know next, right? And then I did it again recently with another video on how to make an animated intro, five steps. I saw a video and I watched it and I was like, you know what, this is missing this, this and this. And I could talk about this software and this, and this is how I would make it. And I was like, okay, well, I should just go ahead and make it, right? And it's one of my best performing videos right now. So that's really how you want to do this. You want to take a video that you want to be suggested next to and make a better video 
meatier version of that. Okay, now before we go any further, it's time to announce this week's viewer of the week. And this week's viewer of the week is Frugal to Freedom. I loved what you wrote. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Now, if you would like to be featured as viewer of the week, make sure you leave a valuable comment on this video about how my content has helped your YouTube journey. And now back to our video. Okay, now the next thing you want to do again to create that algorithmic connection is to mention other related channels in your community posts and your stories and even off platform. So I'll give you an example of that in just a sec. Um, but if you have access to the community tab on YouTube, or if you have access to stories, highlight other people. You can even do this in your description section, right? You can say, go and watch this person's video next. Again, the idea is to build that connection. People go from your channel to their channel, from their channel to your channel. So you're constantly transferring traffic <laughs> back and forth between your channel and their channel, your channel and their channel. Um, and when, when you do this off platform, it works as well. So I did this on Twitter, right? And I went and mentioned a lot of videos that I like or enjoy watching. And I hook up with other creators on Twitter and talk to them. And as a result, they start following my videos and my channel start clicking on my links, right? So it works even outside of YouTube. And it's really all about building connections. It's really all about that two-way flow of people coming to watch you, you going to watch them, them recommending you, and you recommending them. Which brings me to the next point, which is that you should definitely think about doing collabs with people whose um, channels you want to be recommended against, right? So collabs are a great way to formalize that relationship. And I've done a few collabs that have really, really helped bring traffic from that person's channel over to my channel and have more of my videos suggested as a result of that. So I do have a video on how to do collabs. So I'll link up to that right here in the info card. So make sure you go and watch that video after this one is over. Okay, so if you want to fast track your YouTube journey, you definitely want to check out my course YouTube Launchpad, which takes you step by step to starting and growing your YouTube channel. I'll put the link down in the description below. All right, two things. The first thing is I want you to leave me a comment telling me what was most valuable in this video. What is your key takeaway from this video? And the second thing that I want you to do is go and watch this video next on the next video video that you should make on your YouTube channel that's going to get you more views. I'll see you in the next one.